Hi everyone, welcome to our channel Skill RP. So this video is more related to like how we can transform ourselves from an RPA to uh, APA. Like uh, the person who is already working on robotic process automation, how they can move towards the agentic automation as a developer or as a consultant. So whatever it might be. So how we can plan our roadmap in terms of transitioning uh, to uh, agentic automation as a uh, we have seen a lot of buzz around the asyntic automation. So I will not be talking much uh, in-depth concepts of uh, asyntic automation now, but uh, further videos we will be covering of like uh, what are the different uh, key concepts uh, we will be having as part of uh, asyntic automation. And also we will see like how uh, we can build the agents and deploy. And mostly uh, if you go through my channel, majority of the content is well around the UI path. So even this content will be more uh, slightly or uh, you will get a flavor of UI path, but uh, I will try to make it as generic as possible, at least this uh, transition video. So hope that can help uh, the other people who is working on the other tools as well. So we already know like what actually the RPA is. It's completely rule based and we will be doing the automations on top of any rules and predefined processes. And it will not have any intelligence in it. Like uh, for example, if you take uh, an invoice processing, this cannot be attained completely with the help of RPA. So this also we implemented, but we will come to that place. But mostly uh, the RPA processes, if you go back a uh, well long uh, go way back in 2017 or 2016, uh, we used to do a very minimal automations, like most of them are web automations, Excel automations. So very uh, uh, rule-based and uh, very task-oriented we used to perform. And later it was transformed to the IPA. And IPA is having two wings and uh, one is like which, way, which came very latest. Um, I can say this is one thing is specialized AI. and generative AI. So the Gen AI buzz came in the year 2023 late uh, and uh, from then like the start by end of 2024 I think we already got the Gen AI capabilities uh, included and not 23 I think 22 uh, late uh, but uh, the Gen AI implementation is already kick started for some reason uh, a bit late uh, into the RPA space but we used to have a specialized AI, which is nothing but like we are going to have our AI models where the RPA process will be making a call to AI models to get the information. Like when we are dealing with, for example, invoices for data extraction, invoices for data extraction, we used to call the AI models. And later it was transformed with the Gen AI capabilities into our RPA space. So again, RPA plus Gen AI came into the picture where we can work with any uh, unstructured data. Here we will be use specialized AI. We used to use more for uh, any uh, semi-structured data. And here it is purely structured and this is purely semi-structured. And this is more of complete unstructured data and getting information on top of it. So that's how the evaluation came. So if you see here in RPA and in IPA also in RPA, like we used to have the robots, which is doing our task and in IPA robot used to make a call to AI. So in the other words, I can say RPA and IPA, RPA is purely robots. And IPA is more kind of RPA calling AI. This is how the IPA came into the picture, intelligent process automation and RPA and AI combined here. And later what happened is RPA plus LLMs combined, which we came across the Gen AI inclusion in terms of our RPA. Now the agentic process automation came into the picture. So uh, before we talk about the agentic automation in RPA, we are purely more on uh, implementing workflows. We are building the workflows. 
workflows and here we are building the workflows building the workflows but at the same time we are making call to ai models to when whenever it is required uh, later we are calling to gen ai models which is uh, llms wherever it is required so that's how we started initiating and now what this agentic automation will be uh, differ from the existing rpa and the ipa so in terms of agentic automation till here in the ipa we are making a call to llm from the robots now in agentic automation llm will make a call to our automations so whatever the automations we are building as part of our uh, rpa journey we can make a call to those automations in the inside of your llm so that actually calls as an agentic automation so we are just going in a reverse direction of uh, what actually we did when we are making a call to ai or when we are making a call to llm so this is going to be in reverse direction so you will be having an llm model where it will be calling your automations so this is how the agentic process automation uh, we can easily transform like so whatever the automations we are doing we will do the same but we will be making call to these automations in llms so not all the use cases can be implemented with llm so we need to look at like which use cases fit for rpa which use cases are fit for um, rpa plus ai which use cases will be fit, fit for rpa plus llm and which use cases we will be fitting into the agent so based on the use case nature and we will be considering to which we need to go but very slight difference is here we will be making a call to your automations in terms of llms in case if you are talking more on the agentic ai instead of uh, coming by coming out of the rpa world then we can make a, we can make a statement that llm is going to make a call to an api this is nothing but the tool calling or function calling so here whatever we are saying that like automation we will be calling inside of llm because it's in we are in the rpa world and we are already familiar with the automations to interact with multiple systems so here in case if you are coming out of the rpa world and talking about the agents so llm will make a call to any of the tools or functions through the api so this is how the agentic automation differs or slightly differs from the rpa so we can easily transform from the rpa development or a consultant to an agentic consultant so what is what should be our road map so it is very uh, when we see look at the things like it is very uh, looks look like to be very simple that like how we can easily transform but what should be our road map or what should be our plan in order to move that so now i'm bringing on here the ui path flavor here so because more, more of i am on ui path uh, i work a lot so here how we can easily transform and how ui path approach to the agentic automation so directly from rpa it didn't went uh, went into the api so how the ui path journey if we look at the tools journey the when whatever the tools we have in market uh, if we look at their journey we will get to understand what should be our road map so initially rpa so ui path came as an rpa and building the robots and later it introduced document understanding and ai center which makes the call of robots to call ai models so we are familiar with that like first initially it is an rpa and then after that du and ai came into the picture and the robots are calling this ai models or document understanding models and after that it released the generative ai activities before the gen ai what it had done is generative ai capabilities inside of the platform so it brought in the autopilot 
So this actually helps us in terms of doing giving a proper prompt. So we will be getting the flavor of prompt engineering here, where we can give the prompts to the system or autopilot to build your workflows or your work to be reduced. So prompting uh, we will be covering as part of our autopilot. And when you call, talking about the LLM, of course, the LLM, this behind this autopilot, it is an LLM. So this LLM is fine tuned for your autopilot to do your job as part of the integrated platform. And after that, what it had done is it released the Gen AI capabilities, Gen AI activities, so that we are making the calls to Gen AI from the our workflows. So robots to call Gen AI. So what are the different Gen AI activities we have like in terms of document extraction, we have generative extractor, and also there is a separate package which is released for PI data filtering or content generation or rewriting of content. So these are released. And before these two got released, UiPath had released AI Trust Layer, which is nothing but for a security and a governance purpose. Because whenever you're implementing some AI or Gen AI, or any uh, product or any uh, platform you're choosing, you will be more concerned about your data security. So the AI trust layer came into the picture and these uh, both got released. So now you will be get familiar with autopilot and Gen AI activities. And after that, there is a concept of context grounding. Context grounding. So what actually the context grounding is, See, uh, your LLM model is uh, trained with a diversified data. It's not trained on a specific data or any uh, specific use case for you or where you want to achieve. So it's, gen it's uh, trained on a very vast data and diversified data, not with a specific use case. So what actually this is, you are setting the context to LLM. In other words, we can say that we are giving the knowledge based documents or knowledge data to the LLM so that LLM can refer to this knowledge and perform your tasks. So LLM is going to be to refer the documents, refer the knowledge base and perform the actions. When I say the actions like in terms of uh, uh, reading the data and giving the output, it's not interacting with uh, any applications. Now, after that context grounding, now UiPath is planning to build or release the agent builders. So now the agentic process automation is coming into the picture where you will be having an LLM and you will be providing the prompt to the LLM and you will be calling your automations or any integration service connectors. And you will be setting the context to it, which is nothing but the knowledge base. And we can put the human in loop as well. So these things we will be covering as part of our UiPath agentic enterprise framework, but this is how it is going to be. Like uh, you will be having an LLM and we will be providing the prompt to it and we will be calling uh, automation or any integration service connectors to interact with uh, the applications, your target applications, and then we can set the context to that, like providing some document database, and then uh, we will be uh, routing to the manual uh, verification if required. It's not necessary that every time it will go, and the best part of it is, so whenever you are having an integration service connectors or automations you are calling as part of your agentic automation, you don't require any if conditions or else conditions or anything. So this LLM will take care of like which needs to be executed. So it's kind of more of, uh, it is going to take an autonomous conditions. So that's how the agentic automation is coming into the existence in terms of UiPath perspective. So if you want to become an UiPath agentic automation developer, so what should you know? We cannot directly jump into the agentic automation directly. So first thing is you should be good with the RPA implementations. 
and familiar with generative AI and AI? How it works? And you should be knowing context grounding. And this is of like how you are using, but this you should get like how this is happening. This is more of like if you talk about outside of the RPA world, this we call it as a RAG implementation, retrieval augmented generation, like which uh, it will be referring to some uh, data and then it will be giving you the outputs. And once you are familiar with this uh, context grounding and how to use the Gen AI and how to use the RPA, and also in terms of RPA implementations, you should be more familiar with uh, traditional RPA. Oh, I should not call it as a traditional RPA. I can say Studio Desktop and Studio Web as well. Because you will be using uh, integration service uh, connectors like which we are using in the Studio Web here also in the Agent Builder. So then we can jump into the Agentic Automation, Agentic Process Automation, which uh, we call it as Agent Builders. So this is how uh, we should be planning our roadmap. So if you want to transform yourself from the RPA to APA, then you should be aware of like what actually the Gen AI, LLM models, not in detail, but how to use them as part of your automations. And you should be good with your context grounding or else you will not be having a special data with you in order to build your own agent. So your own agent requires, your specific agent requires some data for that in order to refer in some scenarios. If it is a general uh, generalized thing, like if you just want to make it for the marketing, even for that as well, you should be having some outline of on which on top of which you are going to do the marketing. Let us assume you are trying to sell a product and you should be having the specifications of the product with you in order to give. Every time it might not be possible for us to give as part of our prompt itself, the entire data. So you might be having some product documentation and you just supply that to your product uh, your context grounding, your ASIN, so that like it can refer to that and it can summarize and it can write you a very beautiful content without having that, uh, if you compare that like without having that context and with having that context. You can see a lot of difference when it is giving that. So it's more kind of like uh, when you are working or interacting with chat GPT, when you are you're, you're asking the questions, it will give it's based on the knowledge what it is having. And if you submit one document and ask for it, I'll give you a simple example of like how the context grounding works. So let us assume you are traveling very frequently and you want to summarize your expenses. Expenses like in terms of your travel and in terms of uh, your uh, uh, stays and your food and everything. So you can feed all the data into a database, all the your tickets, bills, add it to the vector database. And if you ask the question that like, please summarize my expenses. It can give you an output. If you are not having these, the LLM doesn't know that like where you travel and what actually the cost happened to you and all these things. So this is how we will be uh, leveraging the uh, advantage of the RAG implementation under the context grounding and similar context. This is an example. Similar context can be given to agent uh, process automation as well. So this is how you can transform your career from RPA to Gen AI and then to context grounding and to is in the process automation. So this is how we can plan our uh, transition uh, from an RPA to APA. Hope you like the video and the next video we are going to cover what are the key concepts of agentic process automation and what are the different uh, inputs we may, need, we, we may need to provide and what is the importance of each and every input what we are providing to an agent. So see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.